All right, class. First off, as always, good day. I'm glad you're here. Uh, first off, let me start off by saying if you hear any like loud noises or uh, like sirens went off, it's uh, my neighbors over here are doing some construction work, and then um, we got a you know fire um, department place over there, and the the sirens have been going off. So uh, to just if it comes on, I do apologize. Okay. Uh, I'll try to get through that. Now, last class, uh, when we were actually in Zoom, we talked about the uh, Native Americans and the Aztecs, Toltecs, Mayans, Incas, things like that, those early civilizations. Then, what you should have done is looked at the uh, classwork, the second half. That was about primarily the, um, the people coming over, Columbus and the Spaniards, things like that. And then we talked about the investments of the colonies that the English uh, people came over with. You know, the purpose was to make money. Now, that's going to be imperative for the next thing. Now, again, remember, please, guys, watch this video. Do not stop and pause and things like that. And then, just, oh, I'll get to that later. You know, or, you know, just write down the notes, things. Because um, the thing is. It is important that you actually listen because there might be some extra information I give you and I'll say this is more likely to be on the test and um, if you don't hear it then and I ask a question I want to hear you guys saying, oh you never said it I did say it you just decided to not listen to the video okay so it's imperative that you do listen okay so here's the rundown on uh, the essential questions um, the objective today is we'll be looking at the contribution of john locke that he made in our country so we're going to be looking at that and in a sense the similarities and differences uh between the religious groups created by the great awakening and then i, for, I don't know why i got cut off but the um the the enlightenment people you know we're gonna look at the similarities and differences between the two uh so we're gonna have a warm-up uh, picture you're having the lecture, the opinionated questions, um, and in class we will be having a poll um, session, okay, and our breakout room, okay. All right. So again, we were in the we're in the Enlightenment era. Uh, here's your warm-up picture. Uh, basically, I ask you, you know, what do you see? There's basically three things there um, and what do you think this artist is trying to say you know so look at the picture look at the little symbols and stuff and uh, what is it, what do you think this artist is trying to say okay so if you're still writing go ahead and write uh, pause this video for those of you guys who are finished uh, we're moving on in three two one all right, so here's the thing. Um, there was a thing that the colonies had. Now, this time, they're pretty established. There's quite a bit of a um, colony set up. You know, the 13 colonies are, you know, already set up, ready to go. They got towns running. Um, but the thing is, there's this thing called the triangle trade made by colonists. And it kept them rich, mainly because it kept the money within the colonies and uh, they made deals with other countries you know France and Spain and Portugal things like that um, so they would get money from other countries and then they would make deals with themselves and not include England so the money's coming in it's staying within and uh, the the colonists are making buku amount of bucks and again England wanted the money because they saw this place as an investment. Like, we basically took a chance on you guys, and this is what you're doing. You're making money, but you're not giving us our cut. You know, keeping it all for yourselves, you know. And, again, England really thought that's why they had these colonies, to make them money, not the people, you know, not the companies they start up, but them. You know, so they're getting a little upset. And they basically say, okay, how about this? We give you guys some uh, more freedoms if you give us a bigger cut. You know, so more freedoms for more money. 
and the colonists are like, mm, okay. But that same thing, at that same, pro the same time, the uh, British are doing this thing called mercantilism, all right? And it limits them from making money by selling to other countries. So again, let's just say uh, a town, a company in New England was selling stuff to Spain because of this agreement. Basically, what happened is um, the that company in New England would sell, give the money or some money. They would give the product to England, and then England would then sell it to Spain, and then give the the company whatever money um, they agreed on. But the thing is, England would actually kick up the price, so they made extra for themselves. And then when they said, "Here's your money, give us our cut," they're making double money from what they sold the the stuff for, and asking that company for their cut. So, yeah. And the thing is, anybody who tried to sell directly to another country, it was forbidden by England, and they basically tried to shut them down and stuff like that. Um, colonies that didn't have resources, you know, because, like, you have to remember, places in the south, they had the cotton. Um, up north, you know, they had the trees and things like that. And kind of the middle area is kind of rocky little places, things like that. They really couldn't grow too much. Um, so places without resources, um, they didn't make much money. Yeah, so they were kind of poor in a sense. They make gold and silver. Now remember, at this time, gold and silver is everything, right? Paper money, yeah, it's it's around, but you could trade in your dollar for gold back then. Okay, so the, that money had weight to it. So if you had a dollar bill from, let's say, uh, a colony that didn't really have much resources and uh, didn't make that much stuff, um, that dollar was basically worthless compared to a dollar from the south where cotton was uh, cotton and uh, tobacco was huge. All right, now this is a poll question I had on uh, in class. So... If you have the Google Doc and you miss class and you're watching this video, um, there's a question on the Google Doc there. It's asking you which one is more important to you, money or freedom. Now, here's the thing. When I say money or freedom, it doesn't mean just because you have money, you have freedom. You know, yeah, you can have money all you want, but you, know, you, can, you can't do certain things. And nobody will take your money because, again, freedom to some people is more important. Okay? So... Which one's more important? Okay, with that aspect in your mind already, that just because you have money doesn't mean you can buy freedom. And because you have freedom, doesn't mean you can really make money. So, which one's more important to you? Freedom or money? All right, so take a second, answer that question, and we'll be moving on to the next part in three, two, one. All right, now this guy right here in the picture, that's John Locke. It's not a very flattering um, portrait of him, but that's the one everyone knows of him. He was a philosopher and a physician. Now, the thing is, he didn't create the uh, uh, idea of social contract theory. That was Thomas Hobbes. But he basically kind of agreed for the most part, but he changed something at the very end. He goes, yeah, it's all good up until this part. All right. The social contract theory basically says that people are born free, all right? You're born, you have a freedom to do whatever you want, okay? Um, Chess says you have the freedom to bash someone over the head because you want their PS5. Um, someone could do that to you, right? They have that, you have that freedom to do that to them, they have that freedom to do it to you. Uh, and basically he says that we trade our God-given rights for security, you know, so, okay, I'm going to give up my freedom to bash you over the head to take your stuff if I have the freedom to have my own stuff without being feared of being bashed across the head. Okay. Uh, it creates order in society. And that's where laws come in. And that's where, like, if someone does something, you get punished for it. Right? That's what he's saying. That's what the social contract theory is. We all subscribe to it. We all believe in it. You know, so therefore... We are participants in it, and we give up that freedom. It's a non-verbal agreement. It's nothing written down. As soon as you're born, they make you sign it and things like that. No, no, it's just part of our society, and we agree to it. 
Okay. He stated that we are born with life, liberty, and property. We have those rights to those things. Um, now, again, you have to look at the, those words, life, liberty, and property. Liberty means freedom. Freedom of what? You know, exactly. He doesn't say. It, it's very broad. It's like encompasses everything. You just have freedom. Property. Well, what kind of property? Small things, big things, uh, stuff in the earth. What are you talking about? Sure. That's what he's saying. Sure. Property. Okay. Um, he argued that the power of the monarch, the king and queen, that's what a monarch is, if you don't know, uh, comes from the people. Because easily the people say, you know what? We don't want to listen to you anymore. You know what? We're going to take take over. That they can do it. You know, there's only so much a king can do. What's he going to tell the guards? Get them, get them, get them. You know how many more people there are than guards and stuff like that? You know, so if the people really wanted, they could easily just trample over um, the king. He goes, the people give that right to the king. Okay. Now he says also, if the government violates this agreement, let's say again, um, again, the, the people give the consent to the government, hey, protect us and we'll give up this freedom, that if the government doesn't do their job, doesn't keep up their end of the bargain, that you and I have the right to take back that right. And if they don't give us back that right, that we have the right to rebel against that government. Because then it'd be a tyranny. It'd be like, you know, a, um, a government that's just oppressing the people. You know, it's not living by its ideals. Like, hey, let's start over. You know, that type of thing. All right, so that other stuff, keep it in the back of your head because it is going to come up later. Now we're going to be talking about the Enlightenment and the Great Awakening. Now, this is kind of interesting because still to this day, you see the two. If you really look back at everything that's going on in uh, society and politics and stuff like that, you'll see that there's still going on the Enlightenment and the Great Awakening type of stuff. Okay, The Enlightenment was basically a belief that people can figure the things out, the, na the natural laws of stuff, through logic and reasoning. That people can figure stuff out if you just take the time to focus and get it. You know, now it's one thing to get your information from one source and be like, oh, well, that's it. That's that's the truth. And they're like, no, that's not what it means. Because your one source could be something you believe in. You know, that's it. It's just stuff they, they're going to tell you because that's what you want to believe. He's saying, no, they're saying, no, no, no. Look at everything and digest what is truly the truth and what's just a fairy tale in a sense. Okay? Use logic, use reasoning, figure out the problem. Okay? Um, Locke was kind of one of these people, and he argued that, you know, in the religious sense, people say, oh, you're born in sin. And he's like, how are you born in sin? You're a baby. You're just fresh into this world. How are you guilty of anything? You know, so he argued to that fact and that upset a lot of religious people, you know, because again, a newborn baby, a newborn kid, they're used, they're, they're born, you know, innocent, you know, they didn't do anything. They haven't said anything, you know, um, so that's what he's saying. So he's, he's telling that those, that to the religious people, the great awakening was a revival, a reborn of uh, the Christian spirit, okay? Um, it got, before this, it was got to a dark time when, I mean, people were burning witches and stuff like that, you know, and things like that. And people had some ideas like, oh, we should be working and, you know, churches later and things like that. And um, some people felt that the Bible was being pushed back and the, their faith, you know, the faith of this, uh, the people was as put as a back burner. Uh, participants called for everyone to be born again. That term is still used to this day. Born again Christians and born again, you know, Catholics or whatever. Uh, that term is still used. And to have a connection or a unity with God. You know, they're like, hey, put God back in your life and things like that. And like I said, if you really look at things back up now and look at everything, uh, you'll see especially this in social media and stuff like that. You know, I'm sure you've seen it. You know, type in amen and share or some of that. You know, um, people are trying to, again, trying to get people to reconnect with 
whatever god it is they're trying to get them attached to you know um okay so again look at everything now a large group of christian followers ended up breaking up into several groups they weren't all just christians they said you know what we like this but we kind of believe over here a little bit this thing and this group's like yeah we believe that but we, we also believe a little bit this way. Different from those guys, but we're going this way. And this other group like, you know what? Our our religion, our belief is a little miscued. No, not miscued. That's a good, bad word. Um, a little different than these other guys. So we're over here. Okay? The big of those three religions was Baptists, Presbyterians, and Methodists. Those were the big three. That broke off. So they're basically, in a sense, they're Christians, but they splintered off because they have a little bit of different beliefs. Now, a great example are the Baptists. Okay. They were very, very popular in the South. And their, uh, what they were saying and what they believed really attached to poor farmers. That's the key word right there. Okay. Remember, poor farmers. Because the thing is, um, what they believed in. And one of the biggest issues, and this is going to be a topic for the next couple months, slavery. Okay? Slavery. That's a big thing. Um, Baptists welcomed enslaved Africans. They didn't look down on them. All right? They did not look down on them. They said, you know, these guys are uh, children of God as well. These guys, you know, are... Uh, created by God so why should they not listen why should they not why should they be denied to hear the word of God and stuff like that so they welcomed African Americans and also they condemned that thing quote unquote condemned slavery they looked down on it they thought it was bad you know um, some Christian people used the Bible to try to justify slavery uh, they used a passage from the Genesis uh, part of the Bible and uh, the Baptists were like, no, no, this is just wrong. Um, so a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of African Americans um, at that time became Baptists. Still Christian, but again, Baptists. Um, and if you look in the South nowadays at the demographics, uh, a lot of them still are um, uh, Baptists. Um, and that's the same thing like I saw you in the last video with um, Latinos who were predominantly um, Catholic because of the Spaniards. You know, same thing. Uh, so that's why you see that a lot. Okay. All right. So here's your question. Which group of people, the enlightened or the awakened, do you think favored independence from England? Okay. So remember, enlightened or people who thought... And who said, you know, if we sat down and think and looked at the truth, we could find the issue to any problems. Whereas the awakened people are talking about connecting with God and stuff like that. You know, you need to have that faith again. So which one do you think, um, which one do you believe was more towards independence from England? Was it the enlightened or the awakened? And then why? So go ahead and answer that. Um, I'm going to move on to the next thing so pause the video moving on in three two one all right so now we're at the end of the class so tell me something that you learned today something new what did you learn today in class okay um also if you have any comments that you want to share by all means share them with me uh there's something you liked or didn't like something you didn't quite understand things you feel I should have done better um, if you think I should put more pictures or I mean whatever let me know okay so go ahead and write that out once you're finished um, that's it you're done for the class be sure you put your name on that Google Doc it's the first question up there um, and uh, once you're done you're done okay so you guys have a good day look for the second half of the work it's gonna be on the Google Doc soon um, so keep an eye on that. Uh, so, but yeah, so right, have a good day. Please take care of yourself and your family guys. Okay. Be safe.